Good morning. My name's Kelly. I'm with Ryan's RV in Everett, Washington. We're here on this frosty February morning, and as you can tell, it's frosty. Uh, Going to give you a video walkthrough on our smallest unit that we uh, that we rent in our rental fleet. This is a 2019 brand spanking new Thor Four Winds 22E model. This is the most uh, economical vehicle that we rent. It is the shortest vehicle we rent, and it's probably the simplest to operate for people who are uh, renting for the first time, using an RV for the first time, um, or people who really want to, to stay compact and not have to worry about uh, if they're going to be able to park in the grocery store or that kind of thing. These are really simple. As, as a frame of reference, my last pickup truck and camper was about six inches longer than this motorhome. Uh, they call it a 22. They're all a little longer than they say they are, but it's, it's just under 24 feet overall. Uh, any campground that will take a small trailer or uh, motorhome should be able to get this in there without a problem. Um, and it's got all the amenities that most of the big guys have. So we're going to take and walk you through it. Uh, let's just, let's uh, play along with me. We're going to pretend we're at a campground. We've just got to our campground. I'm going to take you through things in order of what you're going to want to do to get hooked up, get set up, and then be able to use the RV. So things you need to know uh, before you get to the campground. You're 12 feet tall. Okay. If you see a sign and it says that it's less than 12 foot clearance, don't go under it. That's four meters in Canada. Uh, you're over 10 feet wide. I had to come through a 10 foot gate to get uh, into the property. I've got to tuck one of my mirrors in. These are fold away mirrors in order to get through the gate. That means if the width says it's less than 10.6, uh, you're not going to go through it without coming to a complete stop and having another set of eyes out front. Okay. Uh, just keep that in mind. This vehicle has very little tail swing. That means pulling away from obstacles such as gas pumps, trees, that kind of thing. Uh, doesn't require near as much attention as the big guys do. Okay, the back end may swing from side to side a little bit as you're pulling away. Just pull away gradually. Everything should be fine. All right. Um, this unit is equipped with a backup camera, so if you're backing up or you need to watch something behind you for clearance, you have that option as well. Now, once we're in the campground, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we're level. And by level, I don't mean that it has to be exactly level. You don't need to bring a level bar from home, nothing like that. It just needs to feel comfortable on the inside. And what I usually tell people is if you had an egg inside a frying pan, if it's not hiding in the corner, you're level enough. Okay, they're a little sensitive from front to back. If, if they're off level too far from front to back, the refrigerator will have trouble functioning or may not function at all. It's also very hard on the refrigerator. So we ask if you park temporarily, maybe at your house while you're loading or at a restaurant, uh, you had to park on the street for lunch and it's quite a bit off level, you're parked on a hill, please turn off the refrigerators. Okay, now uh, to get level, you'll see I've already got these set up. We call these RV Legos. We supply these. Every one of our motorhome rentals has a 10 pack of these, either in a blue bag or bungeed up in a storage compartment. Um, we provide those free of charge because we want you to be comfortable uh, while you're renting. <coughs> and if you look at the level, you may not be able to tell on the camera, but our nose here is a little bit low. And that is very typical of campsites. Most campsites that you pull into, they're pretty level from side to side, but quite often the nose is low. Uh, that being the case, we're just gonna stack up some Legos um, raise the front end another you know, four inches or so, drive the motorhome up on the blocks, set the parking brake, we're level, and then we can move on to set up our utilities. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, display that for you, and uh, then we'll move on. Okay, so we've pulled up on the blocks. It's important that when we pull up on the blocks that the tire is squarely supported on the block and then I don't have uh, more than an inch of the tire or so hanging off either side of the block. If when I get set up I do have a bunch of tire hanging off, I've got to back up and try again. And the reason for that is tread separation. May actually, with the motorhome sitting like that with part of the tire off the block, it may actually cause damage internally in the tire and we don't want you to have a tire issue on the way home. Okay, so uh, uh, check that out. Once I'm up on my blocks, I'm going to go inside the motorhome, make sure I'm fairly level. I've done this particular site before, so I know that it's level now just uh, by using the correct number of blocks. And you can play with it a little bit if you want to. 
It just needs to be somewhat level, okay? So once that's done, we're gonna hook up our utilities. Now, some of you are going to be dry camping. You're gonna be in a place like uh, the Gorge Amphitheater, for example, or you're gonna be in a national park or a, a Army Corps of Reserves park where there's no power, there's no water, there's no sewer, there's no nothing. In that case, there's nothing to hook up. You do wanna make sure that you've asked us to fill the water for you before you left, or you've stopped somewhere on the, on the way to your destination to fill the water. Um, because once you set up, you don't want to have to leave to get water and come back any more than necessary. Most of those locations um, have the ability of you getting water and getting pumped somehow. The Gorge does have a service. You have to pay for it um, and usually schedule it uh, in advance because they're busy that can pump your tanks and fill your water, um, at least in the premier campground. And uh, we can give you that information if you want it. Um, most RV parks or national parks or Corps of Engineer parks, if they're not a hookup site, there is a dump station for you at the bathroom closest to the entrance of the campground. You can pull in, dump your tanks, pull forward a little bit, fill your fresh water tank, go back, put it in your campsite and start over again with your tanks. So that's how you would do that. For the rest of us that are going to be at a hookup campsite, we're going to show you how to hook up. So come on over this side. Okay, we're on the driver's side of the motorhome. I'm going to show you how to hook up your utilities and uh, the things you need to see on this side. It's really pretty simple. Uh, this first hatch right here is where our power cord is. So I'm going to take my gray key that opens our compartments and work it into my half-frozen lock here, which I'm hoping your vacation's warmer than this. I'm going to reach inside. We've got a power cord all wound up. It's got the 30-amp cord or 30-amp adapter on it, okay? Um, and it's plugged it, it's plugged into the compartment we'll try to leave it plugged in for you I just simply run this cord out through here I'm gonna feed it all the way out and pull that to my power site and then plug it in I'll show you what that 30 amp uh, outlet looks like in just a second okay for the 30 amp cord from your motorhome that's going to look like this probably black but that's the same thing in your RV park you're gonna have an outlet that matches That's really all there is to it. Now your motorhome's hooked up, you should have power. Go inside, check to see if your microwave lights are on. If they're not, the breaker for this is probably um, blown in the campsite. Uh, if you don't see one, ask your ranger. Okay, that's all there is to hooking that up. When you're done, put it back where you found it. Moving on. So a couple of things of note out here. This is the hot water heater. This gets very hot. Um, it can start a fire if you get brush or uh, lean something up against it. Same thing here for the furnace. Um, and these are both sources of open flame. So it's very important that when you get fuel, your furnace is off and your hot water heater is off. Um, we'll show you how to do that from the inside. And if you're not certain, you can always turn off the battery disconnect switch. When the battery disconnect switch at the door that we'll show you in a few minutes is turned off, the engine is turned off, the generator is turned off, all your appliances are totally dead and it can't ignite. The reason that's so important is this is just like I've got a lighter here. Here's where I put my fuel in, okay? So we, we don't want those two things going together. I, I think that's probably enough explanation on that subject. Leave this door closed. There's no reason to open it. If you open it, chances are very good you'll come back without it. It's an expensive door because we've got to have it painted and striped to match, okay? Um, since I'm kind of coming down the line here, this, this hatch right here says shower. It takes a 751 key, which is a little brass key that'll be on your ring or a little silver key, different than the normal compartment key. Inside is a shower head and you've got hot and cold running water out here. Most people will use that hot, will use that water if they, maybe you're fishing, right? You want to clean your fish? We just assume you do it outside the motorhome and so would you. It makes for a lot less cleanup. Um, I use it for dishes. I'll take a little plastic table and do my dishes outside. It keeps the mess out of the inside of the motorhome. Um, a lot of times uh, people with little kids, they come back all sandy or they've gotten into something. It's nice to be able to hose them off with warm water. Okay. I don't recommend that you try to take your uh, morning shower in the campground. It probably might make you a little unpopular un with the neighbors and the local park ranger. So uh, right here, this is a cable adapter. So if you are in a fancy schmancy park that has a uh, uh, cable available, similar to you know Comcast cable or something you'd have at your house. Um, you'll need a cable patch cord that goes from here to the park. Some parks supply them, some don't. If you're going to a park with cable and you ask us at time of walkthrough, we will supply a cable for you. They're not in the RVs because less than one in 30 of our renters are actually going to 
uh, be in a park with cable. It's fairly uncommon for, for most of our campers. Um, but if you ask us for one, we'll supply one. We'll also supply, if you ask, some parks, very few uh, locally, but some in the southwest, a few on our Olympic Peninsula. Uh, you can reserve a site for motorhomes or fifth wheels that says that it is 50 amp service only. Your motorhome is 30 amp service. So if you're going to hook from 30 amp to 50 amp, you need an adapter. Very few of our customers need that, but if, you, if you're going to need that, ask us at time of walkthrough. That is also something we will supply upon request. Okay, let's talk about hooking up your water really quick. In every motorhome, we've supplied a 25-foot drinking water hose. It's specially lined so your water won't smell and taste like a garden hose. On the end of that hose, there should be a brass fitting that looks just like this. This is a water pressure regulator. Your RV is designed for about 45 PSI. Some outlets, like the one I'm going to hook to here, is over 100 PSI. That will destroy the plumbing in the motorhome unless I use this fitting. Okay, so we always leave this fitting on the hose. Most RV parks are low pressure, but we'd rather be safe than sorry. Once that's on, I'm going to hook this to the hose in the campground. You all know how to do that. So then I pick up the other end of the hose, and if we're in an RV park where I've got uh, good access to water, you take this 20, the 25-foot hose, and I go right here in the end of uh, this guy here to the city water connection, tighten that up tight, turn my water on. Now I'm using the water pressure from the hose or from the faucet in the park to supply the pressure in the motorhome. I don't need the water pump switch on, and I have unlimited water. And now, if I don't have sewer hookup, I'm not going to have unlimited you know, waste tank, but I have unlimited water. Okay, so we're going to unscrew this guy. If I am going to fill up before I go, or I'm going to some place like uh, the Gorge, I'm going to an Army Corps Reserve Park, one of the favorite places that I go, there's no water uh, in the site. There's water in the campground near the dump station, but there's no water in the site. In that case, I'm going to fill up the onboard tank. To fill up the onboard tank, which we do before we go, same thing, we use the water pressure regulator on the, on the end of the hose that connects to the campground. And then, up here, on ev every one of the Four Winds models, there'll be a cap. Above it, it says fresh water connection. I just take the end of the hose, set it in there, and don't jam it in there. We need air to be able to escape. But I set it in there and turn the hose on, let the hose fill the tank. There's a gauge inside. I can watch the, the level come up. When it's done, it's going to spit water out here and probably out on the ground. Um, when it starts spitting, it's full. Wind the hose up, put it away, put the cap back on. Okay? That's really all there is to it. This motorhome holds about 40 gallons of water. That's going to get you four and a half, five showers, something like that. Um, by then your fresh water tank will be empty, your gray tank will be full, and you'll have to go dump. Okay? Uh, if you ask us to, we will fill this tank for you before you leave during walkthrough. So if you're going to some place like the Gorge or one of those campsites that has no water, ask us to fill your tank. We don't monitor fresh water tank levels uh, because every customer wants something different. All right. Some people don't want to take the extra weight with them, and if they're going to a full, full hookup site, they really don't want a full water tank. So Make your preferences known at time of a walkthrough, please. This is our sewer connection down here. I'm going to open this door. In the bumper of the motorhome right here, I'm going to remove this plastic cap. And inside here, I should be able to grab the sewer hose. Okay. This hose starts out about 5 feet, but it stretches to 15 feet. All right. So we're going to take this hose out. I'm going to get down here on the ground. Okay, we're here at the dump station on the motorhome, and we're going to show you how to dump your tanks. This seems to be the thing that intimidates people the most. It's really simple. It's not a big deal. Just follow these instructions, and you shouldn't have a problem. Okay? So um, in the driver's door pocket, we have rubber gloves. You're welcome to use those. We supply them to you for free. Uh, we use them for dumping tanks. We also use them for checking the generator oil. Uh, so get those on. Just so you don't have an issue, and uh, grab the sewer hose out of the bumper like we just showed you. You want this end with the brackets on it. And then let's take a peek up underneath the motorhome here. Somewhere, near, somewhere on every motorhome, there's something that looks just like this. There's a cap that will twist lock off. And notice when I twist locked that off, I didn't have my hand up underneath it. Quite often there'll be a few uh, drops of waste, a little dribble or something in there. We want that to fall to the ground, not on our hand or our, our uh, sleeve. So that's dropped down. There's two valves here. We've got this valve that you can see is black, 
and we've got a valve over here that you may not be able to see that is gray. The black is the bigger of the two valves. That is your uh, toilet waste. It's your sewage. Okay. The gray valve is from your sink and your showers. That's what we call the gray tank or wastewater. Um, the wastewater is reasonably sanitary, although sometimes it will have kind of a sulfury smell. The sewage, of course, is very unsanitary, so we want to control that first. If you are in a uh, campground that does not have sewer hookup, which is most campgrounds, most places you go, you're not going to have sewer hookup. Um, when you go to leave the park, the bathroom right near the entrance of the park will have a dump station, and it will be clearly labeled. You want to pull up, um, get as close as you can, Grab your hose and you'll use that dump station. We'll show you how to do that. If you're in one of the uh, more luxurious parks that has full hookup sites, you're going to hook your sewer up uh, in the site. You're going to leave your gray tank open and your black tank closed. You want to leave your black tank closed in, in a full hookup site just so your liquids aren't running off out of the, out of the uh, sewer tank and the solids aren't building up. You want to leave it closed till there's half a tank or you're ready to leave your site and then dump it. Uh, ideally, before you do that, you've closed the gray tank so you've got some water built up in there to flush the sewer hose out. Okay, um, But let's assume that we're just going to dump at a rest area uh, alongside the freeway. Almost all freeway rest areas have free RV dump stations. Um, there's three on I-90 uh, between uh, the Gorge, Moses Lake, uh, and Everett, and there's one on I-5 that's the closest to the dealership. If you need to dump your tanks on the way back, you don't want us to, to charge you for dumping your tanks, and we prefer not to. Uh, on I-5 southbound lanes only, it's the next exit on the freeway north of the 128th exit, which is our dealership exit. So it's really very close. It's really convenient. Um, we ask that you do it. If you don't, we do have to charge you. Okay, so I've got the cap off. I've got my twist lock hose. I'm going to slide my hose on over the sewer outlet here on the motorhome. And I'm going to give it a good twist. Make sure that it's locked on there nice and solid. Okay, we don't want that coming off in this process for obvious reasons. I'm going to secure the other end of the ground. We'll switch to that shot here in just a second. Okay, now I'm going to show you just a couple of things. In, if you hook up in an RV park, chances are very good they're going to have a threaded connector. We supply you with the threaded connector. It's a universal threaded connector that will drop in. And just thread that in there a little ways and thread into the hole that'll meet that'll meet their specifications. Once you've done that, you take the other end of the hose that's not hooked to the RV and it twist locks on the same way you twist locked it on the RV. Just get it on there good and solid. Now if I'm in a park, this is what it's going to look like when I dump my tank. And I can actually see when the tank's done just by looking in the clear plastic. Okay? Now if you're in a, a place that doesn't have the threaded connector, you can just drop that same elbow in the hole make sure it's secure so if you're at a rest area usually there's a metal lid if not there's a rock uh, a block of wood if there's nothing there you may want to have somebody hold that in place with their foot you don't want that walking out of the hole while you're dumping okay but that's really all there is to it once I've done that I pull my black tank I just pull that valve out about that far anything in the tanks gonna start to to evacuate and it'll take 15 seconds to three minutes the hose will shake a little bit I'll be able to hear it once it's done I close that tank I come in and I grab the gray valve same thing I pull it out it pulls out not quite as far um, same thing 15 seconds to a couple minutes the gray tank will quit draining the hose will quit moving you're done uh, I unhook the hose lift it up shake it out okay just like that um, if I had enough gray tank in it to rinse my hose out, great. If not, I want to take a hose, not my freshwater hose, but the hose supplied at the dump station, spray some water down the hose, shake it out good, put the sewer cap back on my RV dump tube. So we're going to put that on just like that. Twist and lock that on. If I don't remember to do that, I can get stopped by the state patrol if it's dangling or they see that it's open. Currently, the ticket in Washington for that's $124. Let's not forget that part. Now on our four winds motorhomes, when you go to store the sewer hose, you've got the cap back on, you've got everything else put away. You know, take the sewer hose without the fancy end on it, and just work it back into the tube. Remember to put the cap on or it's going to come out going down the road, and you're done. It's all stowed. And this is an Onan 4000 watt generator. 
Now, what I'm going to show you here is two things. Actually, three things. First, I'm going to show you how to take off the door. There's a latch here and a latch here. Pull that out, lift up, and the door will come away. Okay? If you are a, uh, a customer that's going to be using the generator a lot, we ask that you check the generator oil a minimum of every 20 hours of use. You have an hour meter inside by the start switch. It's pretty easy to keep track of. Um, if you're just going for a weekend or something, you won't have to worry about it. But if you're going to be gone for a while or using the generator a lot, um, we need you to check the generator oil. It's just like checking the generator in a lawnmower, small engine, if you've ever done that before. Simply just turn this yellow cap right here without the generator running. Now the generator has to be off, right? Otherwise you'll get a face full of hot oil. Bring that up. As long as it's on the stick, you're good to go. If it's not, you're going to add uh, some generator oil, which we've supplied and we will show you on the walkthrough. It's typically in the driver's door uh, pocket. And uh, we've given you paper funnels with it and rubber gloves for doing this as well as dumping your tanks. And uh, you're going to add about four tablespoons of oil is all that it takes to, put, uh, to, to make everything right again. Okay? That's the first thing. The second thing I want to show you is what happens when uh, you overload the generator circuit. Okay? Now the generator is here primarily to run the roof air conditioner. That's its job. Uh, the air conditioner takes about 80% of everything this generator can put out. So uh, if while the air conditioner is on and you're running on generator power, somebody turns on the microwave, uses a hair dryer, a curling iron, or a coffee pot, something else designed to create heat, it's going to pop the circuit on the generator. The generator will stay running. All of your lights inside will stay on because they're 12 volt. But your microwave lights will go off, your air conditioner will go off, and you won't have power at any of your outlets. If that happens, the reset breaker is right here at the end of my finger kind of alongside between this yellow cap and the start button, and you want it to be pulled forward, okay? Pull that forward, everything will have power again. Turn off the air conditioner, finish what you're doing with the microwave or convection oven, whatever you're doing, and then you can turn the air conditioner back on, okay? Finally, when you go to put the door back on, I'm gonna grab it up here by the grill. I lift it up, get it to sit on that lip to where it's there firm, close it, and hit both latches. Now the door will stay closed, okay? That's all there is to that. Okay, we're back on the passenger side of our uh, motorhome and we're gonna spend just a couple minutes to show you what we've got out here. First, we've got this huge storage compartment. I'm gonna open this guy up. Inside, you can see we've got more of these orange Lego blocks. You'll have an awning mat in here that you can roll out alongside the coach uh, just to help you keep stuff from getting tracked in. Uh, that's your big storage compartment, so we'll, we'll keep as much of the utilities out of there as we can and let you use that for your stuff. Um, you've also got two outlets right here. So if you've got the motorhome plugged in to AC power at the campground, that 30 amp cord's plugged in, these will be live. If your generator is running, these will be live. So if you've got an outdoor griddle or an outside uh, boom box or TV or whatever it is you want to hook up out here, you've got power to do that. This is the back of the refrigerator panel. Please leave this closed. There's nothing you can do in here, even if your fridge isn't getting cold leave this closed. If you lose this door, it's several hundred dollars for us to get it uh, restriped to match. Okay? Uh, propane. <clears throat> for most of you, you won't have to worry about propane. Um, your propane, we'll make sure you have enough propane for your trip if you're going in the summer and you're just going for uh, four days or you know even two weeks. Uh, in the summer, the full propane tank, when you pick up, it'll be more than enough to go for you. If you're just doing a short trip, like four days, you're only going to use a quarter tank of propane. We'll make sure there's more than that in there for you, so you won't have to worry about it. You do not have to fill propane upon the return, okay? The only reason you would fill propane is if you've got a longer trip or something unexpected happens and you empty your propane tank, then you will want to add propane. You can do that at any big truck stop. You can do that at most U-Hauls, some RV dealers, some campgrounds. Any place with a big big sign that says propane, knock yourself out. Um, the tank is not removable. You'll have to pull the motorhome up so the fill is near the door. Uh, after you do that, you're going to shut off the engine. You're going to shut off the generator if the generator is running. And you're going to hit your battery disconnect switch just here inside the door because we don't want your appliances running with open flame like right now the refrigerator is. Uh, running with open flame while you're filling propane. That makes for a bad combination. Propane is highly explosive. Um, if you do need to shut it off for any reason, it's this valve right here. It just closes like a faucet. 
you would have to do that if you were getting on uh, any kind of a ferry boat or being in an area that said you know no no explosives that kind of thing okay i'm going to show you how the uh what the awning looks like when it comes out most companies take the awnings off of their motorhomes the big national companies do i don't i leave them on in fact i've given you a power awning because i always use the awning i really like uh, having an awning it gives us shade in the summer it protects us from uh, uh, rain or drizzle the only real thing that we've got to talk about is wind so i never go away from the motorhome and leave the motorhome unattended with the awning out and i don't go to bed at night with the awning out even if I'm going to be gone for half an hour, I'm going to roll the awning back in. As you see, it just takes a few seconds to come out. It just takes a few seconds to go in. It's at the push of a button. In the event that I'm getting winds of more than 15 miles an hour, I have to put that awning up. You get a 20 or 25 mile an hour gust, it is going to damage the awning. It will probably bend the awning arms and the awning will not retract, which means you're in a campsite, your awning's out and you're stuck, you can't come home. And I can't help you with that over the phone. Um, any awning damage the renter is responsible for. We'll show you that it works and everything's functional when it leaves. We're going to check it when it comes back. If it comes back and it doesn't work properly, you're on for whatever the damage is. Um, in most cases, we have to order awning arms as a set. This whole awning can be a couple of grand. We really don't want to have to do that. Insurance will not cover anything to do with awning damage. That is strictly the renter's responsibility. So by all means, use the awning. I just hope that I've given you enough information for you uh, to really want to not leave that awning out when you're not in the coach. Okay, uh, moving on. And so just inside the door, right above the uh, awning switch is uh, another switch that I can hit. And that is the awning light uh, that also serves as a porch light. Uh, it will work with the awning in or out. Um, and then we've got some more switches here we'll cover when you come inside. Come on in. Okay. We're just inside the entry door of the motorhome. Here you will notice a switch that's a dial. This is our battery disconnect switch. We talked about that earlier. You may want to turn this off when you're getting fuel or propane. So to turn it off, I just turned it up. You'll notice all the lights, everything in the house part of the motorhome went dead. That will only work when the engine's not running, the generator's not running. Um, uh, that's an on-off switch. It'll kill everything else in the motorhome. Okay. So uh, above it here, we've got uh, this switch, which is our awning light switch, the out outside porch switch. We've got this guy here, which is the center lights in the motorhome, so you don't have to fumble around in the dark when you come in at night. We've got a switch here that is a step and courtesy light. There's a couple of those throughout the motorhome. Um, some people will use that as a night light or they'll leave it on when they, they leave to go away in the dark so they come back and the motorhome is not completely dark. And this is the momentary switch to hold for the awning to come in or out, okay? And you literally just have to hold the button until it's done all the way in or all the way out. Uh, finally here, we've got a counter extension. Flip this guy up. It gives us uh, some extended counter, which is good because this being a small motorhome, there's very little countertop. And to put it down, I simply lift with one hand, reach my arm underneath it, push those two guys back, and it'll drop into place. All right. Uh, and then... Around here, we've got the loaded fire extinguisher right by the entry door. Um, we're hoping you don't need it, but that's where it is. Okay, now we're at the control panel. This is just inside the door, kind of up on the cabinets, as you can see. Um, this is the, the brain or the control center for the motorhome. We've got several things going on here, so let's just go through them one at a time. We're going to start up here. This is our generator hour meter and our generator start switch. To start the generator, um, I'm going to press and hold the start button. The generator will turn over and should fire up after about five to ten seconds. It's running right now. Uh, so even with the door open, it, you can tell it's not real loud. Um, our generator hour meter has got less than an hour on it. So this one's been tested but hasn't been used. Um, we're going to record that time uh, when you pick up and we're going to record it when you come back. We include five hours of generator use per day for every day that you've paid for. So if you've used it for a week, you've got 35 hours of generator use. You just heard that beep. That was the microwave coming on. Um, tells me that I do have power to the motorhome now and my microwave lights are on. If my microwave lights are on, I have 120 volt AC power in the motorhome for the outlets, the microwave, the air conditioner, the TV, things like that. If they're not on, I don't. Whatever I've plugged into, uh, I don't have power on. And if the generator is running and it's been running for 15, 30 seconds and that hasn't happened, in all likelihood, the breaker on the generator has been thrown, um, and we showed you how to take care of that earlier in the generator segment. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off now. 
Next up is LPG, that is liquid propane gas. That's the propane we're taking with us. And as I push the button, you may not be able to see it on the video, but all four lights light up, it is full. Uh, battery level, same thing. Fresh water is the water that we would take with us. This tank is empty because it's been winterized. Our black tank and gray tank are both reading empty. The lights would show up here and tell us what's going on. Very commonly, after you dump your tanks, um, even if you did it correctly, the gauge, especially for the black tank, may read a third or two thirds full. That's a false positive. It will usually go away when the sensor dries out. Sometimes it doesn't. Don't worry about it. If you're sure you got it dumped, bring it back. To be really sure, you can open the, uh, go to flush the toilet, look down the hole. If you can see the bottom of the tank, it's empty. Okay. Uh, tank heaters, you're going to leave these off all the time. We don't generally rent our motorhomes when it's as cold as it is right now. Uh, if it's frozen outside, we don't want you driving down the road. Um, and we certainly don't want you having to chain up. That's not allowed. If you have any questions about cold weather use, please ask at uh, time of booking. Uh, water pump, this is uh, going to pressurize the water that we have in our fresh water tank on board or the water we're taking with us. If I'm hooked up to a hose in the campground, I don't need the water pump on. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it on and leave it on. You'll hear the pump run. It'll pump up to pressure and shut off. It will allow me to have water pressure at my sink, my shower, my toilet, etc. Okay. Uh, next over here, we have our water heater. This particular water heater has two ways to turn it on. You've got propane gas and you've got 110 volt power. Um, there's no reason you can't have them both on if you're in the park. Um, that will get you a little more hot water, a little longer shower. Just keep in mind that you are quite limited as to the tank capacity uh, for your gray tank. All right. So if you're only going to take two showers and you want to have both of those on and maximize your hot water, great. The nice thing about the 110 if you're in the park is it is saving on propane gas. All right. That's all for that. Let's move on. Okay, so let's cover the kitchen and the motorhome really quick. Um, you can see I've got my counter extension up for a little ex extra space. Um, we have a small sink because this is a small motorhome. If you want a double sink, we'll be happy to rent you that big 31 footer. And here we've got a three burner stovetop. So I just flip this guy up and maybe don't let it drop like that and uh, fold it out of the way. I've got a three burner range, very, very easy to light. Turn it to highlight, turn the sparker. I've got propane, okay? So uh, I'm gonna turn that back off. Um, now, in the event that um, you've got the air conditioner on and the air conditioner is dumping its air right here in the summer, in order to get that to light, I may have to put a pan over the burner to protect it from the airflow of the air conditioner. That's quite common. In addition to that, I do have up top here, you'll see there's an exhaust fan. I can manually turn that on and then the switch for that fan is right here. So if I'm cooking breakfast or I'm cooking something where I want the exhaust to go out and not stink up the motorhome, Certainly, if you're trying to cook fish inside, uh, we prefer you do that outside at the campfire when that's allowed. Um, that's going to evacuate that smell, okay? I'm going to get that guy closed again. Remember, you cannot have these roof vents open going down the road. Uh, that'll be on your checklist of things to do before you go. If you forget to lower one of the roof vents and the one in the bathroom is the one that's most commonly left open, um, you're going to come back without a vent lid and we're going to charge you. They're not a lot of money, but it's 65 bucks, something like that. If you're going to come back with something damaged, that would be my first choice. <laughs> Those are very easy to change. Okay, so I'm going to put this away. And the microwave, uh, these all come with convection microwaves in them. And you heard me talk about uh, checking to make sure the lights are on. If the clock lights are on on the microwave, you have 110 power. I turned the generator off. I'm not plugged in right now, so they're off. Um, if you don't know how to use a convection microwave, you can use it just like a normal microwave or you can use it like an oven. For more details, download a, the YouTube's got hundreds of videos on how to use a convection microwave. By all means, check that out. The refrigerator, when you come to pick it up, we will do our best to already have it on auto. Um, there is no reason for you to take it off auto for your entire trip. The only exception would be when you were fueling or getting propane and you've, you've shut it off. However, when you shut it off and turn that switch back on, if it was set on auto when you unplugged it, it will come back on auto when you plug it back in. There's a green light here. As long as that green light is on, my refrigerator is working, okay? These are a two-door fridge with an upper freezer compartment and a lower uh, standard refrigerator compartment. They are bigger than mini RV refrigerators. They're not the largest, but they're pretty good size. We recommend that you use uh, this, unless there's just two of you. If there's two of you, you can get away with using it for everything. If there's three or four of you, you probably want to take a cooler for your beverages. It's really sensitive in the summer, uh, especially on a hot day. These refrigerators have to work very hard to keep up. Uh, if you've got them in a 90 degree environment uh, or, or higher, 
it's going to be important for you to leave your refrigerator doors closed as much as you can. Only open it when you're going to prep a meal and then leave them closed. Um, common complaint I get from uh, people that have a lot of kids uh, traveling with them is their, their food went bad. Well, tell your kids to not open the fridge. Um, you don't want to open these doors more than once every few hours if you want your, your food to stay cold when it's hot. Okay, uh, this will work on LP gas when you're going down the road. It'll work on 120 uh, volt AC anytime the generator's running or the coach is plugged in. And it will switch back and forth automatically. Just leave it alone, it'll do its job. Okay, you can see we have a double bed back here, plenty of room for a couple of adults. And uh, here on the wall right here is our thermostat. It's a really easy thermostat to turn the furnace on. I just move the lever on top up and the furnace will come on. Okay, when the furnace comes on, it's going to blow cold air for the first 20 to 30 seconds. Then it's going to heat up. It'll bring the motorhome up to temperature and shut off work just like your furnace would at home or office or anywhere else. That's all you have to do. Um, when you, I'm hoping you're someplace that's warm enough and you don't have to use it like we did today. Um, but if not, just remember to turn that off when you're gone. It does use quite a bit of propane. If you're dry camping, that uses the most 12 volt battery. All your lights is LED. Everything else is really efficient. The furnace fan will drain your batteries reasonably quickly. So if you're camping uh, someplace fairly cool and it's running all night, you'll have to do something a couple hours a day to get your batteries charged back up. Uh, usually start the generator. Or if you're moving between campsites and the motorhome's running, that charges all your batteries as well. To put the dinette into a bed is quite simple. I take and pull this lower cushion out of the way. It's really cold in here and everything's brand new so it's stiff. Under the table, there's a little lever right here that I simply flip around that way, and then the table will drop into place. I really like those. I think those are slick. Much easier than lifting a table up on poles and wrestling around. And now it's a bed, okay? Um, this bed is pretty comfortable for someone up to about 5'10". It can be a couple of people as long as they get along real well and they're not as wide as I am. Um, you'll notice there is a little little buckle here. This is a car seat tether. It's the only one in the RV. So in addition to the seat belt that's here, if it has a rear tether, that would duck down behind here and latch onto, on, onto that tether. Okay. The last appliance to talk about is the air conditioner. Uh, so this air conditioner uh, takes a lot of power, all right? You're going to need to be plugged into the 30 amp outlet either in a campsite or you're going to have to start the generator and have the generator running anytime you want the RIF air conditioner, all right? The RIF air conditioner pulls about 22 of your 30 amps that's supplied either from the campsite or the generator. What that means is while the air conditioner is running, I can't use the microwave, I can't use a hair dryer, a curling iron, a coffee pot, an out outside electric griddle, anything like that that's designed to create heat because anything uh, that I just talked about is gonna pull about 15 amps. This is pulling down about 20 amps, that's 35 amps. You're not gonna get away with that very long. Maybe a little bit, but not really long, okay? So if I'm going to use any of those things, I'm gonna shut the air conditioner off, do the activity they need to do, the convection microwave, take care of my hair, whatever it is. Once I'm done with that, I'll turn the air back on, okay? Uh, with the generator running, um, I simply turn this to cool, set my thermostat, this guy's gonna come on and blow cold air, okay? Um, as an alternative, in the back over the bed is a 12 volt exhaust fan. If I'm gonna be gone from the motorhome for a couple hours and it's the middle of the day, I can open the vent over the bed, turn on the 12 volt exhaust fan, crack one of the front windows, create a draft, and I'll come back without the motorhome feeling like it's been baking in the sun all day, okay? Here we are in the bathroom of this 22-foot motorhome. This bathroom for a small motorhome is actually quite large. You can tell, obviously, I'm standing in the shower with my shoes on. Um, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm built like a linebacker. I'm about 5'10 with my boots, and I've got another close to foot I, uh, taller I could be with my head in the skylight. So you can be a pretty big person in here and be quite comfortable. Um, we've got a typical shower head right here. This is our, our shut off that's on the shower head. So typically I'm going to get the water set to the temperature that I want, just like I would at home. Um, I'm going to get wet. I'm going to turn the water off at the shower head, not here, so I don't have to readjust my settings. Shampoo, soap up, whatever you're going to do, rinse off turn it off again. The reason I'm taking you through this is we almost always want to conserve water for several reasons. 
First and foremost is I don't like a cold shower. You're going to get six to seven minutes of hot water um, to take a shower with. That's it. So you want to use that wisely. Secondly, if I'm not in a full hookup site, so I don't have my sewer hose hooked up and I don't have my fresh water hose hooked up, which would take both of them, um, I'm going to have a holding tank problem. I'm only going to get about five showers, maybe four and a half uh, showers in this motorhome at six minutes each before my tank is full and my fresh water tank is empty. So generally we want to conserve water that way as much as we can, just like if we were on a sailboat. Okay, you just have a few minutes in here. Uh, most parks have nice shower facilities. If you want that long half an hour shower, take some quarters, go to the RV park, uh, bathrooms. Um, a lot of people, uh, experienced RVers would recommend you bring flip-flops so you're not worried about picking up anything off the floor, but however you want to do it, okay? Um, obviously the sink works just like any other sink you've ever seen under the sink in this compartment and we don't have it in here yet because it hasn't gone out but there will be six rolls of rv toilet paper it's important that you only use rv toilet paper please 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 do not bring charmin or some other uh, bathroom tissue from home um, it will clog up the system you're going to have problems dumping that's not something i can help you with and if you come back with a paper clog you're going to pay us to take care of it um, it's not something we want to do at all let alone for free Okay. Um, also in there, there will be a um, package uh, with RV toilet chemical in it. Typically they're drop-ins like you'd have for your uh, dishwasher or you'd have like a Tide Pod kind of a deal. Every time after you have dumped your black tank, you can drop one of those down the chute. That will help eliminate odor and help um, keep things uh, being uh, digested chemically that way so they, they break up and it's easier to flush. Okay, uh, let's finish talking about the toilet everybody's favorite subject. Uh, with an RV toilet, much like some boat toilets, there is no water in the bowl uh, when you go to use the facilities. So if you're just going to go number one, hey great, do what you're going to do, use as little paper as possible. Um, the foot flush lever is right here, I just push that, a valve opens, some water comes down, everything drops down into the tank, no problem. If you have to do more than that, and some people will say, well that's not going to happen in my motorhome while I'm camping, we'll use the park bathrooms, great. Sometimes there's an emergency and not everybody feels that way. So um, if you're going to leave a, a solid deposit in the toilet, I think that's the nicest way I can say that. Um, before you sit down, you're going to gently push this foot, foot lever down about an inch, inch and a half, and you will see water start to go flow into the toilet and the water level in the toilet will raise. You need to raise the water level high enough that it will fully cover up any deposit that you're going to leave in the toilet. If you don't do this and there's other people in the motorhome, you're about to get voted off the RV island because you've just made the entire motorhome smell like a very rank outhouse. Everybody's going to evacuate and it's on you. So uh, that's how you take care of that issue. The more uh, clean water to go with solid waste and toilet paper down the chute, the easier it will be to dump the tanks. Okay. And final reminder again, we've mentioned this earlier, if you're in a full hookup site, you do not leave your black tank or your sewer tank valve open. You want to leave that closed until we build up enough fresh water, um, enough, well, at least enough liquid in the holding tank to fully flush that tank out. Otherwise, you're going to end up with quite a bit of solid and paper in there on the bottom of the tank and create a clog. Okay. Okay, let's talk about breakers and fuses and that stuff just for a second. It's very simple. On this motorhome, we've got a power converter right here. If I push that button and pull it down, here I've got 110 breakers and 12 volt fuses. Chances of you needing to get into that compartment are less than 1 in 50. Not likely is that going to happen, okay? More likely for things to happen, um, we talked earlier about hair dryers and curling irons and that kind of thing. In the bathroom, uh, on the side of the, the cupboard next to the toilet, there's a GFCI breaker. You've seen those. It's like those funny square outlets that you have at home with the reset buttons. All of your outlets on the motorhome are wired through that particular uh, GFCI breaker. So if somebody has a curling iron uh, plugged in and you go to use a coffee pot, it's going to pop that breaker. You'll have to unplug one of them, reset it. And that, that's the one in there. That's probably the most common. The second most common or uh, issue is the breaker on the generator we talked about earlier from overloading your 110 circuit while you're plugged into the generator. Um, a few safety items that we have. The most important one we have is under this dinette, there's a, you'll see a green light on a brown square. That is liquid uh, propane or a propane gas detector. If that you come in and that goes chirp, 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 it's not an emergency. Your house batteries are low. Start your generator, 
uh, or drive for a couple hours, get your batteries charged back up. Anytime your batteries are low, it takes at least two hours, it can take up to four to get your batteries fully charged again. Okay, so regardless of what the gauge says, 15 minutes into your charging cycle, it's going to say that they're full because it's reading full voltage. They're not charged. It takes a minimum of two up to four hours to charge your house batteries. You can do that by driving, renting the generator, or plugging the coach in. Okay, but back to that propane detector. If it starts screaming like a smoke detector going off, only worse, um, you have an emergency. Uh, you need to treat it like an emergency. The only thing we're going to check is we're going to check these three knobs to make sure that they're all turned off. And if you've got a toddler or somebody who's the right age and size to be playing with these, do yourself a favor, pull these knobs off, put them in a drawer. Um, we're fine if it comes back that way as long as the knobs are in the coach, we'll put them back on. Um, this will pump propane right into the, right into the house. Um, propane is very explosive. It removes oxygen from the environment. Um, and th there's never a good ending to that if it's not taken care of right away. So if you come back to the motorhome and you go to open the door and you can hear it screaming, don't even open the door. Turn off the propane on the outside. Get away from the motorhome. Um, let it evacuate. It's going to take some time. It is an emergency. Okay, please get out. Um, we have a, f a smoke detector right here. There's a smoke detector on the roof. Uh, we all know what that means. Somebody burnt toast or overcooked something. That happens. Uh, this dial right here is a TV antenna. Uh, we can talk about that more when you pick up. Unless you're going to be staying in a metropolitan area, or you're staying really close to a city, uh, that's not going to do anything for you. If you want to watch TV, bring some DVDs or bring a laptop or an audio a video player or something that's got an HDMI connection. You can plug into the... Uh, DVD player right there. It's got a USB hookup and it's got a USB connection you can plug into. Um, this coach also has what we call an entertainment inverter that will allow you to watch TV and play a DVD, um, even charge something with a 110 charger without your generator running. It's a, that's an extra uh, little deal that we have in there that will uh, supply 120 volt power off of your batteries. So if you've got a kid that wants to watch TV while you're going down the road, that is possible. Okay. Okay, let's, I'm going to show you this front area right here. This is generally how we travel. Um, I've got the ladder stored off to the side. It can also be Velcroed on with, with these guys here. We just need it not loose up there so it can't damage the TV while you're going down the road. Now, if while you're going down the road, especially if you've got four people with you, um, you've probably got some stuff stored up here. Sleeping bags, maybe a suitcase, soft-sided gym bag, something. Uh, it's really important that we don't have any of that stuff come down and hit the driver in the head while he's driving. That's a safety issue. So if you are going to store things up here in the front, we do ask that you take and turn this into a bed um, while you're traveling. And I can do that this way just by flipping that over. Okay, now it's a bed. I do need to secure the ladder, so please have something up against the ladder and nothing hard that can hit this TV. Obviously, these TVs are a little expensive to replace. Um, if I do want to watch TV, I can loosen this knob that's up here, and there's another one down here, and then the TV will just swing out. Now from the dinette or from the back bed, I've got really good view. When I'm done, I'm just going to push it back against the wall like this and tighten up these knobs so that it can't swing out while I'm going down the road. Um, obviously, if I'm going to have kids up here, please make them take off their shoes. Tell them not to kick the TV. You're going to be responsible for any damage. We also ask that you not have food and beverages up top. Um, if you come back and there's Cheetos ground into it or somebody spilled a beverage, um, we have to take all of this apart to clean it. It's difficult to clean and has to be professionally cleaned and then dried and it's a little bit of a hassle. Um, there will be an extra charge if you bring it back and we've got to clean this upper area. Okay, I'm in the driver's compartment of the motorhome. Um, for any of our four winds, this is the dash uh, for everything except the Mercedes versions. Uh, they're all Fords. The Ford ignition key is a long skinny key that looks like this. I can start it up. Um, this will stereo uh, pairs to your Bluetooth phone really, really easy. Um, once, once the engine's running, if you have the Bluetooth turned on on your phone, you should be able to push this button and then go to your phone under Bluetooth. Um, it's going to give you a stereo you've never heard before, uh, letters and numbers, something you've never seen of under uh, available. Click that. It will pair. Once it pairs, 
you can play whatever music you have on your phone you can play Pandora um, if you're using your phone for navigation it's nice to be able to hear um, the navigation voice over the speakers and that's coming off my phone right now real easy all right so if you have a phone holder or something you want to take that will fasten onto the RV without leaving a mark, you're welcome to. The ones that attach up here are probably my favorite. So you've got nav right there and you're hearing it through the sound system as recommended. You've got two charging ports right here for 12 volt charging ports. So you can charge your phone, your iPad, whatever it is that you want to take with you. Um, you also have a USB charging port right there. And you have an HDMI port here that will play to the uh, stereo however it won't play audio, it won't play video to the stereo while you're in motion okay um, additionally right here I can pull this open I've got a USB charge cord adapter slot so if I want to hook a device up without Bluetooth uh, not have any radio interference I can use a USB charger cord there and just a standard auxiliary speaker cord here uh, will come in uh, this is not a navigation unit. You're going to have to use navigation unit uh, navigation from your phone, but you can pair it and hear the sound through through that. Okay. Your generator we talked about earlier. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, how it is fueled. It is fueled off the primary fuel tank. Right now, I'm below a quarter tank of fuel. My generator won't run, or at least it won't run very long because the generator is tapped in at a quarter tank to make sure that it doesn't run you out of fuel if you've gone off and left the generator running. On a hot day, if, if you don't want to cook your passengers, uh, you're going to want to keep more than a quarter tank of fuel in the motorhome at all the time. It's a 55 gallon tank. I want to stop more often than that anyway. I mean, to use um, 40 gallons of fuel is a lot of fuel. Uh, that's a lot of driving. Uh, even in this one, that's a lot of driving. So. When you get down, you know, around a third of a tank, be looking for the next gas station. Um, cruise control is on the dash. Wiper and high beam is right here. There's wiper. To wa windshield washers, I push it in like that. Um, over here by my right knee is a switch that says emergency start. If I go to start the motorhome and the batteries have gotten low for some reason, I've been using the stereo, I've left the parking lights on, something. I can press and hold this button and it's a momentary switch, meaning I have to hold it. While I start the coach, the engine battery will, will jump off of the house batteries, two separate systems, and start the motorhome for me. So essentially you can jump the RV without getting out of the driver's seat. That's really nice. We do have a map light here. Uh, headlights are just <laughs> three position switch off, parking, headlights are on. Uh, all right here on this side of the dash. Um, Let's talk about this tow haul button here, especially on my bigger ones. So my, my 28s and my 31s, if you're doing a steep grade like a mountain pass, uh, when you feel the motor starting to shift down and work harder to pull you up over the mountain pass, press this button. I'll get a yellow light that comes on on the dash under the tachometer that says tow haul. That's telling me that it has uh, eliminated overdrive almost entirely and has put the transmission in more of a work mode so that it's not always trying to shift between gears. Um, it's better fuel economy that way. It's easier for the coach. More importantly, as I come down the other side in tow haul mode, the transmission will hold, it, hold its gear and not make you want to ride the brake as much. Okay, We're in a motorhome that weighs somewhere between 11 and 12,000 pounds. Uh, plus all of the stuff you put in it. Going down a steep mountain pass, when I'm on the brakes all the time, in the summer when it's 100 degrees, guess what? Your brakes are going to get hot and that can cause a problem. Since we're talking about that real quick, and primarily only in my bigger ones, um, double especially if you're really loaded up or maybe you've paid extra for a towing allowance if we let you tow something. Uh, we do that for things that are lighter. Ask us if it's a concern. Uh, don't show up just expecting to be able to tow. It does not work like that. It's got to be approved in advance. Um, but going down the hill, I want to have my tow haul mode on so that my transmission is doing part of the work and I'm not cooking my brakes. If I'm going down the hill and I feel the steering wheel start doing this, or I have to push harder on the brake than, than I did a minute ago, those are signs of brake fade. If it's, I hit the brakes and it's pulling to the right, that's a real big sign of brake fade. Um, you don't have much brakes left. Uh, your brakes have gotten too hot. They're not going to work correctly. 
find a safe place with a lot of lot of long runway off the side and get off the road stop let your brakes cool for 15 minutes very unlikely for it to happen unless you're doing something very steep you're fully loaded and it's very hot but I want to cover that with you so if you start getting any of those symptoms assume you're about to have a bigger problem okay uh, questions in any of that please see us in person emergency brake is the old style foot operated down here uh, under the dash by my left knee and the release is up underneath the dash by my left knee okay we'll see you at the walkthrough when you come to pick up thanks for listening goodbye for now